mysteries that lie at the heart of the cosmos. The double slit experiment is one of the most famous experiments in quantum physics. The late physicist Richard Feynman once described it as containing the essential mystery at the heart of quantum mechanics. The double slit experiment proves that quantum particles can behave as either waves or particles and is a great illustration of how the manner in which they are observed determines which behavior will be exhibited physically. In other words, our conscious choices, about measurements in this case, determine the kind of physical reality that a particle will actually have and it is not the case that particles exist as independent objective lumps of matter moving about out there in space and time. Consciousness affects matter in a fundamental way. In classical physics, a system of interacting particles is expected to function like clockwork, predictably and deterministically, regardless of whether or not they are observed. But in quantum physics, the observer interacts with the system to such a degree that the system cannot be thought of as having its own independent existence. Quantum physics is holistic. The observer is part of the system being observed, and the very act of observing a thing changes it. This is so because quantum particles are webs of interrelationships, not solid little balls of matter. Any action in one part of the web reverberates throughout the whole system. The double-slit experiment allows us to see this as it happens in real time. The experiment itself is deceptively straightforward. Imagine a metal plate with two narrow slits. An electron gun poised to fire electrons through those slits one by one and a screen ready to register each electron's arrival. A single dot for each electron. Over time, a pattern emerges. Now, if we were throwing tennis balls through two similar slits, we'd predict two clusters of marks, one behind each slit. Simple, right? But when it comes to electrons, the reality is far from simple. Instead of two distinct clusters, the screen displays multiple stripes with gaps where few electrons land. This pattern doesn't mimic the expected behavior of tennis balls. Instead, it resembles the interference pattern of two waves colliding. This interference pattern consists of alternating bright and dark bands, indicating that the electrons passing through the slits are behaving like waves. Imagine what happens when incoming ocean waves meet an obstacle like a harbour wall that has two openings in it. The lines on the left of the diagram represent waves rolling in from the open ocean, but as soon as a wave passes through the openings, it effectively breaks up into two new waves, which then begin to spread out, colliding and interfering with each other. When two waves collide, their energy is combined. Peaks are added to peaks, forming even higher peaks, and troughs are subtracted from troughs, forming deeper troughs. The peaks are represented here by the bright stripes on the right, the troughs by the grey areas between. This is similar to the pattern that the electrons create. It's as if each electron behaves like a wave, passing through both slits simultaneously, interfering with itself. But how can this be? We are firing electrons one at a time. How can a single electron, expected to act like a ball and go through one slit at a time, behave like a wave? This is the paradox at the heart of quantum physics. Depending on whether one or both slits are open, electrons will behave like particles or waves. Physicists grappled with how this could be. It is easy to understand that a wave, like an ocean wave, could pass through both holes in a wall at once since a wave is a spread out thing. But the classical notion of an electron demanded that it be considered as a particle. Physicists, therefore, expected each individual electron to go through only one of the two open slits, not through both of them at once. According to the materialist view, an electron would have to go through only one slit at a time, like a tennis ball, and never through both at once. Remember, the interference pattern is obtained when only one electron is fired at a time. So the pattern is not caused by interference with other electrons. An electron is fired, it presumably travels through one slit or the other and arrives at the detector screen, then another electron is fired and so on, until enough electrons have been fired to build up a pattern on the screen. But how do the electrons know where to land to build up an interference pattern that would only be appropriate if they were waves? Physicists don't know, they only know that it happens. But this isn't all. Not only does a single electron traveling through a slit on its way to land on the detector screen somehow obey the statistical laws of distribution that are only appropriate to waves, it also seems to know 
whether one or both slits are open. If one slit is closed, the pattern produced will not be an interference pattern. It will just be a single stripe, like that made by tennis balls. How the electron knows whether the slit it doesn't pass through is open or closed is a mystery, one of the central mysteries of quantum physics. And things get even weirder. Physicists have tried peeking to see which slit the electron goes through by placing electron detectors at each of the two open slits. These detectors register the passing of the electrons but do not interfere with them. Remember that under the materialist paradigm, the behavior of objects is straightforward and predictable. Objects have definite properties and follow predictable paths. For instance, a ball thrown in the air follows a parabolic trajectory. This predictable path is a hallmark of classical mechanics, where forces and motions can be precisely determined using Newton's laws of motion. The observer plays no role in influencing the behavior of these objects. The results are the same regardless of who is watching or if anyone is watching at all. However, in the quantum realm, the act of observation plays a crucial role in determining the behavior of particles. This is a fundamental departure from the materialist paradigm. When we are not observing the electrons in the double-slit experiment, they behave like waves, spreading out and interfering with themselves, creating an interference pattern on the detection screen. But here's where things get really interesting. When we attempt to observe an electron, to pin down its location, something remarkable happens. The wave function, that ethereal cloud of probability, collapses. The electron, as if startled by our gaze, chooses a single position, materializing from the realm of possibilities into the concrete world of measurement. The interference pattern disappears, and the electrons behave like tennis balls once again, even when both slits are open. The electrons seem to know not only whether one or both slits are open, but whether they are being watched. This is the observer effect and is where consciousness enters the picture. It shows that the act of observing can change the behavior of particles. And it shows that the world is not as concrete and predictable as we might like to think. In the realm of quantum physics, the observer and the observed are interrelated, each affecting the other. The observer's conscious awareness of which slit an electron passes through changes the way it actually exists in physical reality, forcing it from a wave-like thing to a particle. And in a way that we still don't fully understand, the electron seems to know when it's being observed. In this grand cosmic chess game that is the spectacle we call existence, every portion of the whole is connected to every other. Our perception of the world around us is just a sliver of a vast interconnected web, where actions in one part of the web influence all other parts. Imagine a physicist observing a probability wave. This act of observation affects both the physicist, who becomes aware of an electron, and the wave, which collapses into the observed electron. The intriguing part here is that the physicist never actually sees the probability wave itself. Interaction is possible, yes, but direct perception? No. This aligns perfectly with the new consciousness-based theory of reality, where the physicist's probability wave is just the tip of an inner iceberg that represents a deeper reality, a realm of inner vitality that can be termed action. Action can be thought of as the conscious energy of the universe, but like the probability wave of matter, it cannot be caught and held. Even the perception of an action changes it. This is because when we perceive an action, that perception is itself an action which then changes or distorts the object perceived. This distortion, however slight, creates a new reality and an electron emerges from the probability wave or from the state of potentia or action into physical reality. In physical reality, we don't perceive the probability wave of matter directly. We cannot physically perceive the realm of potentia or inner action. Only after the probability wave has collapsed into a material particle can we perceive action, but by then it has taken on the guise of physical matter. The physical senses can only perceive action when it is camouflaged in physical form. That is their function. Before the collapse of the wave function, while the particle is still in the wave state, the electron exists simultaneously in every possible location. It is, in effect, everywhere in the universe at once, including in both of the slits. This allows an electron, so long as it remains in potentia, 
and has not been observed to occupy both slits at the same time and interfere with itself. The interference pattern that is produced is caused by the interactions that occur between the various probabilities within the wave within action itself. This state of affairs cannot be translated directly into physical reality and must remain in the state of potentia. Its effect, however, is real and observable in the distribution pattern of electrons. To become physical, the electron must make a choice. Physical reality demands specificity. The electron must be one thing or another and in one place or another. Physicists can therefore never physically see an electron behaving as a wave and passing through both slits at the same time. They never see both detectors going off at once, for instance. When physicists attempt to observe the probability wave using detectors, it always collapses into a definite particle. But if they don't look, the electron behaves once again as a wave, a wave whose existence lies within the realm of action or inner reality and cannot be physically seen, only inferred. So when there are no detectors, physicists cannot say that an electron goes through a particular slit. It goes through both at the same time. And this is not due to any limitation on the physicist's equipment if no one is looking nature itself does not know which slit the electron goes through physical reality does not exist in that kind of objective way instead nature keeps all her options open all her probabilities open for as long as possible it is the act of observing a system that forces it to select one of its options which then becomes real this is what physicists mean when they say that a conscious observer creates the reality that they observe. We are each constantly creating the reality that we perceive and consciousness is intimately involved. Consciousness is the choreographer behind this dance of creation.